Good afternoon, and welcome to St. Andrew's Parish for the Vigil Mass for the fifth Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please stand. Welcome to Mass for Sunday, and thank God for health and faith to be here. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Today, in the Gospel, Mark's Gospel, we hear again about healing over the last week or so, we've been hearing about healings that Jesus has done. And I want to speak a little bit about healings and also about Our Lady and the shrines, especially one particular shrine where it's associated with healing. Let's just take a moment now first and ask the Lord to remove all those worries and the distractions from the week gone by. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to his people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Please be seated now for the readings. A reading from the book of Job. Job spoke, saying, Is not man's life on earth a drudgery? Are not his days those of hirelings? He is a slave who longs for the shade, 
a hireling who waits for his wages. So I have been assigned months of misery, and troubled nights have been allotted to me. If in bed I say, when shall I arise, then the night drags on. I am filled with restlessness until the dawn. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle. They come to an end without hope. Remember that my life is like the wind. I shall not see happiness again. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise the Lord who heals the brokenhearted. Praise the Lord who heals the brokenhearted. Praise the Lord for he is good. Sing praise to our God for he is gracious. It is fitting to praise him. The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem. The dispersed of Israel he gathers. Praise the Lord who heals the brokenhearted. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He tells the number of the stars. He calls each by name. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. To his wisdom there is no limit. The Lord sustains the lowly, the wicked he casts to the ground. Praise the Lord who heals the broken heart. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if I preach the gospel, there is no reason for me to boast, for an obligation has been imposed on me, and woe to me if I do not preach it. If I do so willingly, I have a recompense. But if unwillingly, then I have been entrusted with the stewardship. What then is my recompense? That when I preach, I offer the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. Although I am free in regard to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so as to win over as many as possible. To the weak I have become weak, to win over the weak. I have become all things to all, to save at least some. All this I do for the sake of the gospel, so that I too may have a share in it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. On leaving the synagogue, Jesus entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Simon's mother-in-law lay sick with a fever. They immediately told him about her He approached, grasped her hand, and helped her up. Then the fever left her, and she waited on them. When it was evening, after sunset, they brought to him all who were ill or possessed by demons. The whole town was gathered at the door. He cured many who were sick with various diseases, and he drove out many demons not permitting them to speak because they knew him. Rising very early before dawn, he left and went off to a deserted place where he prayed. Simon and those who were with him pursued him and on finding him said, everyone is looking for you. He told them, let us go on to the nearby villages that I may preach there also 
For this purpose I have come. So he went into their synagogues, preaching and driving out demons throughout the whole of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Good afternoon again. As I said at the beginning of Mass, you know, thank God for our health and thank God for our faith. They're two very important things at the moment, are they not? Now, the Gospel again is speaking about healings. Jesus healed the mother-in-law of Peter. The whole crowd were outside looking for healing. Every year, if you remember Pope John Paul II, most of you do, and he was diagnosed, I believe, around 91 or thereabouts with Parkinson disease, right? And the year after that, 1992, he brought in what he called World Sick Day, when we would recognize those who are sick and those who would look after the sick. And um, it is only when you're sick do you realize how important those around you are. They become very important because you're very vulnerable at that time, especially if you're lying in a bed and you are seriously sick. You're dependent very much on those around you. You know, yesterday... I was called to the hospital to anoint some people. First one was okay, it was an elderly man. Didn't look like he was too bad. But then I was told uh, there's a hospice room. And usually a hospice room, that doesn't sound too good, does it? You know. So um, when I went into the room, it was dark. And I noticed this young girl sitting down near the bed of her mother, it happened to be. And she was holding her hand. And um, all I could say to that young girl before I left the room, I said, you know, you're a very blessed young girl to be able to have the, the discipline, the courage, the strength, whatever you want to look at it, to be here with your mother in her last hours. Because I said, many family members, just the way they are, cannot handle it. I said, these hours will stay with you for the rest of your life, but you'll never regret it. You know, and I, I kind of thanked her and said, you know, you're, you're doing well to be here. Because she was all alone in a dark room with her mother there. She was holding her hand at the last few hours. Many cannot do it, but... That's how life is. But when we think of World Sick Day, it's now 29 years. Every year, starting with Pope John Paul II, after he getting sick, you know, he was a very robust man and very healthy man. And then uh, between Parkinson's disease and getting shot in the square, he went down fairly quickly. But... The next pope, Pope Benedict, continued it, and now Pope Francis, and it's 29 years. But you know what day they gave for World Sick Day? Do you know what day they gave? They gave 11, February the 11th, which is Thursday coming. Do you know why February the 11th? Well, it goes back to Our Lady of Lourdes, when Bernadette was a 14-year-old girl, living in um, France, in Lourdes. And Our Lady appeared to her when she was out getting firewood on the 11th of February. But on one of the apparitions, Our Lady asked her to drink from the water. And, of course, the poor child thought it was a river behind her. She was going towards it. And Our Lady said, no, no, no. She pointed with her finger to the ground. So the child tried to scrape up some of the moist water that was there, but she wasn't having much success. 
So she scraped again in the ground and she was able to cup up a little bit of water in her fist, in her hand, and drink it. Well, very shortly after that, that particular spot, the water started gushing up. And uh, a little later, somebody drank the water that came up from there and was miraculously cured. You often hear of Lord's water, right? This is where it's coming from, that miraculous spring that came up there. Many were cured in Lourdes over the years, but every year, and it's very humbling to go there, and you always thank God for the gift of health, when you see hundreds and thousands on stretchers, on wheelchairs, bringing them down to the grotto and in procession. So it's because of Lourdes that the day is given as February the 11th. Now that statue that is here, we brought it out again yesterday, that pose that you can see Our Lady there in the statue, at one stage, the poor child told the bishop, uh, Our Lady wants a chapel built in this area. And he said, well, who is this woman? What is her name? Bernadette didn't have a clue because Our Lady didn't say who she was. She just said, the lady. And then on one of the apparitions, the pose you can see right next to me, she clasped her hands and looked up towards the sky and said the words in French, I am the Immaculate Conception. The poor child didn't know what those words meant. It was only four years before that that the Pope came out and said that Our Lady was conceived miraculously in the sense of she was born without original sin. Now, this 14-year-old would not have understood it or have heard of it. Remember, this was in 1858, right? There was no internet as such. So when the bishop the priests heard it, they were amazed. And then they understood that there was somebody coming to this child of 14 years of age. If you ever get the privilege of going to Lourdes, you will see a replica just looking at that statue up high in the cave. The other church, Annunciation of the Lord, the school is called Our Lady of Lourdes School. And across the way where the kids play, there's a grotto there with Bernadette and Our Lady in the grotto there. This is where, again, and this is why Pope John Paul II the 11th of February that he used that day for healing. But now there's also, I want to speak for a moment about, there's a sacrament. How many sacraments do we have in the church? Do you remember? Seven of them. But there's one very important sacrament. They're all important. And it's the sacrament of anointing for the sick. Now, that sacrament is a beautiful sacrament, especially for those who are going through serious illness, going for serious operations, or those who are up in age and weak in health. Right. Now, that sacrament, the oil that we use, actually it's olive oil that's blessed. Why olive oil? Because, I guess, in the time of the Lord, in the Holy Land, olive trees were very plentiful, right? So olive oil, the oil that's used. Now, in that sacrament, the priest puts the sign of the cross on the forehead through this holy anointing. May the Lord in his love and his mercy help you with the grace of the Holy Spirit. And then he puts the oil on the palms of the hand, both hands, making the sign of the cross and asking for forgiveness for whoever he is anointing. Even if a person is in a coma, 
If they had a disposition to ask for the sacrament, it suffices. But you might ask, why does the priest do it? Why not the beautiful nurse or doctor who is looking after the patient? Why don't they do it? The reason is that it is tied in with the confession. And if in their hearts they did this position to be forgiven of their sins, they are forgiven. So it's a very important sacrament. When any of us is really sick, then we're fearful. Um, Satan never gives up. He's always harassing us. And especially at the time of somebody who may be near death. If you read the lives of the saints, when they were coming near death, some of them were very fearful, even though they were great saints and led good lives. Satan doesn't give up. But it helps to strengthen with comfort the person can give physical or spiritual healing. So it is an important sacrament. But don't ask for the sacrament too late. It's only for the living, not the dead. And if you're going for a serious operation or have a serious illness, don't be afraid to ask for that sacrament, right? It is available to anybody who is seriously sick. So, um, you know, we get called to the hospital all the time, but um, even before going in would be a good time to get the sacrament because they don't take you into the hospital today for nothing. It means you're going in there for a serious reason. So Thursday, it happens to be the day we're doing the healing mass here in the church on the 11th of February, Thursday. There's only one healer, and that's Jesus Christ. Uh, because of the, the virus at the moment, we're not really able to pray over people like we normally do, but we have the Blessed Sacrament put on the altar here that we have, and you can come up individually and spend a bit of time with the Lord. So we will have the Healing Mass Thursday, which is the 11th of February, all for all who are sick. Amen? Let us humbly now profess our faith in one God, I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God and true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the power of the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. On this Saturday afternoon now, we raise our hearts and our minds to our Heavenly Father as we bring the needs before him that the church, the seed of the kingdom inaugurated by Christ, may be nourished by his grace to grow in unity and holiness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That government and public health officials may be granted wisdom and strength in their efforts to manage the pandemic. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That the good news of God's kingdom may give hope to all those in misery and despair. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That this faith community may be blessed by the Spirit with love, joy, and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our Lord. prayer. That those who die in hope may be met by Christ in the fullness of God's kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear Lord. our prayer. And for the repose of the soul of Joanne Menard on her first anniversary, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Just pause now 
for a moment in the silence of your own hearts. Heavenly Father, you see into the hearts of all who are present in this church this afternoon and those who are listening and watching on the airwaves. We bring all our prayers before you through the intercession of the Blessed Mother as we say the Hail Mary together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise of our O Lord, our God, who once established these sacred things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. fountain of all wholeness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body, 
and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Edgar, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those Lord, we 
we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. is Jesus, the risen Lord, the healer. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. At this time, you can make a spiritual communion. I love you, O oh my God. I cannot receive you in holy communion. Come, nevertheless, and visit me with your grace. Come spiritually into my heart. Purify it. Sanctify it. Render it like unto your own. Amen. Yeah. 
gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto thee, O virgins of virgins, our mother. To you do we come, before you we stand, sinful and sorrowful, O mother of the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in your mercy, hear and answer them. Amen. O Mary, conceive without sin. 
pray for us. May the heart of Jesus in the most blessed sacrament be praised, adored, and loved with grateful affection at every moment in all the tabernacles of the world, even to the end of time. Amen. Saint Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl around the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Faith Formation next Sunday, February 14th, grades 1 and 2 will meet in Confirmation 2, grade 10. The women of faith will be selling soup this weekend after all masses for Super Bowl Sunday while supplies last. Thursday, February 11th, the Feast of Our Lady of Lourdes, also World Day of the Sick, there will be a healing mass at St. Andrews. Rosary and Confessions at 6, Mass at 6.30. Benediction and healing prayers to follow. <coughs> Excuse me. If you know someone that is ill, they can watch the Mass live streaming on the website. Take a Heart Project begins this weekend. Take half a heart and return to be joined with another family. See bulletin for details. <laughs> the winner of the Afghan raffle is Chardal Jones. Thank you, Mary Lynch, for donating the beautiful Afghan to the youth group who raised $170 for their activities. <clears throat> Catholic Social Services is doing a survey on the needs for the visually impaired. There are copies of the survey at the entrances and there's a link in the bulletin if you would like to take the survey online. The Daily Missal, the Magnificat, is available for February, donation of $5. Ash Wednesday, the Mass is at the Annunciation of the Lord, not at St. Andrews, as the bulletin says, but it's at Saint, the Annunciation of the Lord at 6.30. Plenty of information in the bulletin. Please remember to take one home and share all that is going on in our parish. Let us pray. O oh God, you have willed that we partakers in the one bread and the one chalice. Grant us, we pray, so to live that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for salvation of the world through Christ our Lord. Just to remind you, um, Ash Wednesday begins Wednesday. It's coming up very quickly. So the Mass here is per normal in the morning at 8 o'clock. And in the afternoon, the evening, the Mass is at 6.30 p.m., but it's an Annunciation of the Lord. You know where that is? just down the road. So we'll have the 6.30 p.m. Mass there and the morning Mass here. Um, also to remind you, the Women's Guild are selling soup after the Mass, so they should be at the doors when you're going out. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended now. Go in peace and love to serve the Lord. Thank you all for your presence, and may the week now be one of peace and especially health these days for all of you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you.